Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm just doing a quick video today on some uh, some cable railing accessories that I was uh, given a chance to demo here for you guys. Um, so if you happen to watch my original DIY cable railing video that I did a couple years ago, I'll link that here in the top of the video also. Um, I did some just some cost-effective ways that you could do some cable railing on your, on your home or uh, business, wherever you were going to be doing it at. And um, the big reason I made that video was because I did a lot of research when I was trying to trying to come across something to use on our house, and everything I found was pretty proprietary and very expensive. And I didn't need that much, and I didn't want to spend a lot of money. So, in the comments of that video, a gentleman named Terry from Musada, and I, I apologize if I'm not pronouncing that company name right, but that looks like how it's spelled. Musada Cable Railing got a hold of me and said they had some really cost-effective. Uh, hardware that you could use on your on your home and asked if I would be willing to demo some of it in a video. So I made it clear to him that I would do that, but I would be honest. And if I didn't like it, I would tell you guys that. And if I did, I would let you know that as well. And so he wasn't worried about that at all and decided uh, to let me pick a couple things off their site to send out to try. So I tried to stick with the most uh, affordable option they had on their site because I know that's why most people are looking at my original video to try to do something on a budget. And I thought these were a pretty cool uh, idea. And I'd seen these before from other companies, but they weren't this cheap. So they are just a, a crimpable um, lag screw that the cable slides into. And there's a left and right side. And you can see here we have our left and right. And that allows you to crimp the cable in, in those, uh, those lags. And then as you're tightening them down on each end, it doesn't unravel your cable. It actually tightens it up as you go. He also sent me a five millimeter drill bit to uh, pilot the holes with, and that would be three sixteenths um, if you have just some imperial sizes. And then he also um, sent me a cable cutting tool that they also stock on their Amazon site. He also sent me a hydraulic uh, crimping tool to make that to make crimping these a little easier. So I'm gonna try to do it with the tool that they sent. And I'm gonna try to do it with just some um, cable cutters to see if if it looks as nice and if it's as durable, um, because I know some people may not wanna to purchase the crimpers. And then I also wanna show you something else that I thought would be nice to do and maybe even more affordable would be to use these in conjunction with a turnbuckle system. So um, I'll just show you these here in a second and we'll get going on that here shortly. And then he did was nice enough to send me some stainless steel cable. And if you've watched my first video, you'll know that I kind of learned, or if you watched my follow-up video, I'm sorry, to that first video, you'll see that I regretted using galvanized cable on my deck. Um, the stainless steel cable is just way more rust resistant. And um, I was just amazed at how quick the galvanized cable that I use rusted. So they did send me some stainless steel cable to demo as well. So um, I will link all this stuff in the description of the video so you can see where to get it from. And um, we'll get going on that right now. So I made a short section of just um, temporary railing here for us to try to, to install these on. And I wanted to do something where I could put a good, you know, a good uh, tightening on them and make sure they're nice and snug. And then we could kind of test them out and see how strong they are. What I did beforehand here, I just went down and I marked three spots, even, even distances down for me to set my lags in. So I've got these marked on both ends. And I'm going to pilot them real quick, and then we're gonna install the uh, the lags. We're gonna install um, a, a left and a right side lag here, and we'll put the cable between, and then we'll tighten them down. Okay, guys, I'm gonna use the left side on this side here. And according to their video, they say we're gonna we're gonna pilot this, and we're gonna install it halfway in, so it leaves us some threads to tension our cable with. So let's go ahead and do that pilot hole first. Now, first thing I was gonna wanna show you here is there is a flat spot on there you can see to um, use your wrench on. Now, I will say it's an it's not a very wide flat area, so a normal crescent wrench doesn't really fit on it very well. So I have a kind of a small crescent wrench that I keep on hand, and I'm gonna see how that works. I'm not sure that it's gonna get a good bite on it, but it might be enough to tighten it down. And keep in mind, they're left and right threads, so one side will tighten, the right threads will tighten like a normal uh, righty-tighty 
uh, screw and the left-handed threads will tighten reverse. So clockwise on the right-handed thread and counterclockwise on the left-handed thread. Okay, so now let's do the other side. And I'm gonna use the right-handed on this side. Go ahead and pilot our hole. And we'll go ahead and tighten this one. It is a right-handed thread clockwise. Okay, so now I have both of them installed about halfway and that, they may not be quite halfway, but they're close. So now the next step is basically just to put our cable between the two. We're going to slide our cable inside of this until it bottoms out. Then we're gonna use the crimping tool they sent to crimp down in two spots on this stainless steel sleeve to, to crimp the cable in place. We'll do that on the other side as well and leave as little tent or as little slack as possible between the two. And then we will, but we'll start tightening them both to tighten that cable up. Okay, so we're gonna slide the cable in, make sure it, it bottoms out in the actual sleeve like so. And now I'm gonna grab that crimping tool. Okay, so the tool comes with a few different dies that go inside of it and they are steel, so they are should be pretty durable. We are gonna use the eighth inch die. And so how this works is we're gonna take this tool and you're gonna basically release the, uh, the keep out of it here at the top. And there's a channel in here, I don't know if you can see it or not. There's a channel that these slide down inside of. So. We're gonna leave the open end up and we're gonna slide that down inside like so, Oops, sorry, like so. And then we are going to put this over our cable and then we're going to slide the top one on top of that one, like so, down the same channel. And then we're going to close this. Okay, so now you can see this is basically, we're going to tighten this down so that we're in the on position. And we're going to squeeze this cable in here with this hydraulic crimper. So I'm just going to crank it up here. Okay, I'm gonna do it in two places. They recommend that. So I'm gonna tighten back up. I'm gonna go ahead and loosen it back up. And then to remove it off our cable, I'm gonna take the top die out release like so. So you can see we have two crimp spots on the cable. Feels like it's it's in there pretty good. Now we'll move to the other side and do that. Okay now we're on the back to the right side and I'm going to basically just get my cable lined up here with the you can kind of tell where the where this is pinched where you tighten up with with your wrench. That's about the bottom of the actual of the sleeve so that's about where that cable bottoms out. So I'm gonna kind of eyeball it in here. Looks like about, I got the cable pulled somewhat taut right now. And I'm gonna go about right there. Like so, those actually work pretty good. And we're gonna slide in. And I'm gonna go ahead and crimp this side too and we'll, then we'll tighten up. I have this pretty loose right now. I probably should cut a little bit more off. If I look at it, I have about a quarter of an inch. So I'm gonna leave it alone. Now, I do have a lot of slack in here, so I wanna see how much we can pull out of here. I, uh, I think I had about a half inch of slack, maybe more, but I have a good inch on each side that I can tighten these down. So let's go ahead and do that and see how it looks. Okay, you can see I have quite a bit of slack here. My thoughts are, I don't want a lot of thread showing. 
So hopefully that will make up for it. I'm gonna do the left side threads first. Okay, and you can see that's kind of twisting the cable up. Now I'll go back to the right side, the same amount of turns, so it brings that twist back out of the cable. Okay, I'm gonna jump back to this side. You can see it's already getting pretty tight. That is really tight right now. I don't know if you can see, you can hear like a piano wire. And I still have um, a good half an inch of threads on each side here, maybe just a little under that. So you can see I still got a little bit of thread left to work with. And I will say that is pretty tight and seems very sturdy. That, uh, that was a pretty simple process. So now my next thing would be um, just for preference, I don't want to see threads. This is just me, not just me talking here. I don't like to see the thread. So my thoughts were to uh, set one of the actual crimping, uh, the stainless steel crimping lag screws in one end and um, to do a turnbuckle on the other end like I did on my other on my other railing. So um, that would actually, um, for more cost effectiveness, that would actually let you get one of these kits that has a left and right. And you could basically do the left and rights all down one side and then run to turnbuckles on the other end. So, um, but I just wanna do one of those two here just so you can kind of see what that would look like. And just FYI, Muzada sells stainless steel turnbuckles as well. So you could get this from them or you get those from your local hardware store. Um, this so far, um, I'm wishing I would've had these when I did mine because I definitely would've went this route, I think. So let me go ahead and do this next piece and we'll look at that. Okay, so real quick before I jump into this part, I just wanted to kind of do this with what I had on hand to see how this would work. So I just had cable cutters is what I used on my last video. It's what I had on hand. I didn't have the hydraulic crimpers. Now we'll say I like how that crimps and it looks really nice. Um, I want to try it with just the bolt cutters on here and see how that work. And I just crimped them in two spots to see if it hold it. Now you can, you can definitely say that does not look as nice. Um, but I just want to see if it was doable. So it seems to be in there pretty good, but I'm going to go ahead and put this side in and then I'm going to cut the other side to fit a turnbuckle. And I'm gonna use the same route I did on my last video um, that I did, and it'll be just basically using a turnbuckle, a cable ferrule, and an eye bolt just to tie the end, and then we'll see how that looks as well. So we'll go and get going on that here. And just to show you again what I'm gonna use here, this is just gonna be an eye bolt that's gonna pass through the whole the whole board. I'm gonna have an aluminum turnbuckle, and then I'm gonna use a cable ferrule to crimp the, uh, the loop in for the turnbuckle to hook to. So um, I'll do that next, and then we'll see how durable that looks, or how durable that is, and see if it looks decent or not. You can hear that one's pretty tight. Mazada is a little tighter up top. I'm gonna kind of do a view here of both of them so you can see what it looks like. Okay, so here's kind of what they look like side by side. So you can see the, the turnbuckle definitely is a little more of an eyesore. Now, if you're gonna have them all terminate at the same spot around the corner where you wouldn't be able to see them, you know, not as big of a deal. And on, honestly, the turnbuckle I'm using here is pretty ugly. You can get, um, Muzada has some pretty nice ones and I'm, and I'm just using Muzada as a reference because that's the stuff I've looked at recently. Um, they had some pretty nice looking turnbuckles on there and they had some stuff that was way more decorative. You can see they both look pretty good for the most part. Um, I do like the clean look, like I said, of just the lags. And you can see here, so I was talking about, you can still see some thread on them. So not, you know, not terrible to look at, but down here I was looking more to try to get the thread 
uh, not exposed. So, and again, this is that ugly uh, cable cutter, I'm sorry, the bolt cutter crimp I did. I want to see if it would work or not. And then the turnbuckle. So now let's see how tough it is. So I know you're wondering, because I am, how strong can I can I stand on them? So I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna put some reinforcement on the side of my of my uh, fake railing, though, so it doesn't tip over on me. Because um, I do have kids, neighborhood kids, climbing on our railing a lot, and I want to see if it'll take it. So um, let's do that now. All right, let's try the turnbuckle first. So my turnbuckle failed before the cable did. Uh, the uh, hook on the end bent and opened up, so it got loose. Um, the actual Musada end stayed in just fine, so we'll call that a fail on the aluminum uh, turnbuckle. Now for the just Musada lag screws. Seems to have held up pretty good. You can still hear it's really tight. Okay, in summary, um, what I recommend the lag screws. Um, if you've watched the video, yes, they they worked well. They were easy to use. They're uh, affordable and they're clean looking. So um, now, would I recommend the cable cutters? Yes, I would recommend those as well. They made it easy, made the job way easier than it was last time when I had to use my side cutters. I had to really gnaw through that cable and it really it really kind of mushrooms the end of it so it wouldn't fit inside of stuff easily. I think definitely if you're gonna be trying to get them inside these these uh, sleeves, you're gonna wanna have a nice clean cut. Now the uh, hydraulic cable crimpers, uh, crimpers, they, um, you know, do I recommend them? Yes, if you have the money. Um, they're a little more of a high price item from what I could see on their site. On Amazon there, they were upwards of 80 to $90. Um, you know, they do come with some other dies in the box you can see there. So you could use them for other things. I don't know what else you'd use them for, but um, you know, if you could go in with a buddy that's gonna do some cable railing and you wanted to split that cost, that would be a good way to go also. You know, I did do the bolt cutters to crimp this one to see how it looks. It doesn't look the best, but it seemed to hold up okay when I stood on it. You know, the turnbuckle gave away before we could really tell. Um, but you know, maybe if you're in a budget or on a budget, you could stick with that route. And uh, again, from far away, it doesn't look terrible. You know, it's not, not the best look by any means, but you know, um, if you'd have the money, definitely get the crimper. So now a little caveat to that, you know, these tools, I've only used them one time today, um, a few times a piece. And so I have no, no, um, opinion on the durability or the longevity, you know, maybe look more for the Amazon reviews on that. You know, they feel like good quality tools. They feel good in the hand. Um, but you know, again, without using them for a long period of time, I can't say for sure, you know, and the cable itself and the, and the fittings, they seem to be, they seem to be pretty good quality. And again, I'm, I'm using these one time today. Um, you know, time will tell. So definitely look for the reviews on those as well. Also just want to thank Muzada for sending the stuff out for us to test here for the channel. Um, you know, when I talked to him on the email, I told him that um, I was going to give an honest review and that if uh, stuff went south, I was going to publish that in the video and they were cool with that and sent it out anyway. So they had some faith in their product and, uh, you know, it seems like it worked well. I hope this gives some people some more options or at least some more stuff to look into when they're doing their railing. You know, I appreciate you guys watching as well. It means a lot to us. You know, if um, you have any questions about the product or questions about what I did here, Definitely feel free to ask a question in the comments section here. I do my best to reply to everybody if I can. And uh, again, guys, thanks for stopping by and watching. And I'll put links for all this stuff in the description so you can find it easier. Again, thanks guys for stopping by and have fun building your railing.